Whether he was scaling the sheer rock faces of the Jundlin Wastes canyons or trudging through the merciless dunes of the southern desert, Kenobi didn't particularly like traversing through the harsh environments of Tatooine. But despite the difficulty of walking around beneath the searing dual suns, Kenobi never purchased a flashier ride. Like Soros Subs, Corporation X-34 Landspeeder, or Bespin's Motor CK-6 Swoop Pike that Kenobi had once used during his campaign in the Clone Wars. So what did Kenobi use as his method of transportation? And why did he never choose a more reliable, mechanized option? Join us as we answer these questions and more in today's underrated moment. When Obi-Wan Kenobi first came to Tatooine, along with his master Qui-Gon Jinn, they traversed the harsh landscapes of Tatooine atop a camel-like quadrupep known as an Eope. At merely 175 centimeters in height, these creatures were perfectly suited for a single passenger to ride, or to carry several pieces of heavy luggage. Years later, when he returned to the Outer Rim world to protect Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi once again selected the unassuming Eopi as his mode of transportation. Even though Kenobi tended to an entire herd of powerful Banthas that lived nearby his hut, the Jedi Master decided not to use one of them as his steed and instead only relied on them for milk. When we look at Kenobi atop an Eopi, it's hard to not wonder why he would choose such a creature. After all, Eopis are notoriously slow and move at a snail's pace as they navigate the shallow slopes of the northern Dune Seas Hills. What's worse, unlike the relatively placid temperament of other mounted animals, the Eopis are incredibly ill-tempered. Whenever their owners upset them, it was not uncommon for one of these beasts to vomit its most recent meal into its mouth, then perk its cheeks together in order to shoot its regurgitated stomach contents as a projectile. Although these negative qualities are almost too overwhelming, especially for a Jedi Master who preferred more elegant beasts, like the female dragon mount he rode to his duel with General Grievous on Utapau shortly before the end of the Clone Wars. But when we ask why Obi-Wan would choose the Eopi as his mode of transportation, we have to remember Kenobi's duty on the planet. He was there to protect Luke Skywalker. Every Imperial soldier in the galaxy was on high alert for Force-sensitive beings, and it wasn't entirely unlikely that Luke could accidentally demonstrate his powers in front of a patrolling group of desert stormtroopers. But that wasn't the worst of it. The Inquisitors and their commander, Darth Vader, were desperately searching for high-ranking Jedi escapees, just like Obi-Wan Kenobi. If they discovered Obi-Wan still lived, it would only be a matter of time before they drew a connection between the disgraced Jedi commander and the moisture form that he always seemed to protect from Jabba's passing thugs. In order to conceal himself so that he could better serve Luke, Kenobi decided to be as inconspicuous as possible. That meant he rarely showed his face in public, and if he did, he didn't make a show of it. He wore a ragged, sand-covered cloak, allowed a disheveled brown beard to cover his iconic contours of his face, and, of course, didn't ride an expensive bantha or landspeeder across the wastelands. Instead, he used a simple, honest, Eopi mount.